small town southern wife. Today, we're canning up dried beans. It's starting to get cold outside, so you can't do a lot outside, so that's when I start canning up my beans. We've been doing dried beans a long time, and I'm gonna show you the things you do do and the things you don't do. So come on and let's get started. Okay, y'all, we're fixing to look our beans. We've got them all right here in a bowl, and we're gonna look them a handful at a time and put them in this bowl. Now you could just open that bag up and start canning, but I'm telling you, don't do it. Because one time I opened them up back before I figured out you're supposed to look your beans and do all that ahead of time, I canned some and we opened up a jar and there was a big old grub worm sitting right on top of my beans that had come out, come to the top during the cooking process and was sitting right there on the top. So now I figured out, don't do that. You got to look your beans and make sure you look them good for rocks, grub worms, or any bad ones. And for 21 jars, I do know that it takes 10 pounds of your beans to do 21 jars. And remember, we already mixed up our brine, and that's four gallons of water to a half a cup of salt. So now we're going to turn around here and start looking these beans because that's the only way to go. Don't do it the other way. Okay, y'all, right now I'm fixing to make my brine. And the way we do it is we don't put our salt in each jar. We make us a brine in these food grade buckets that we have that uh, Travis got a while back, a couple years ago, and I love using them. And we always make a brine when we're canning. And uh, what we do is this recipe for the 21 jars for my canned beans, it'll take four gallons of water to a half a cup of salt. So what we're gonna do now is just start filling up our gallon jug. I'm just using a regular milk jug and we're gonna start filling up that jug and I need four of them. So we're gonna put four gallons in this uh, bucket and then I'm gonna mix my half a cup of salt in it and we're gonna give it a good mix and let it be sitting while we're working on our canned beans. Okay, now that I got my four gallons of water in my bucket, we're gonna take our half a cup of salt and just pour it in there. And that right there is the measurements for 21 jars. That's one teaspoon of salt per jar, if you do the math. But putting it in here, you can put all your salt in. The half a cup is just enough for 21 jars. And then we're gonna give that a good mix and just let it set to the side till you get ready for it. And let the, all that salt start dissolving. Okay, y'all, we're fixing to get started on looking these beans. I just wanted to say first though, these are great northern beans is what we're canning. But if you're, you could can whatever your family likes. If you'd rather have pinto beans, black beans, uh, field peas, this recipe and this canning recipe will work with any kind of dried beans. So let's turn around here and get started. Okay, y'all, we got our beans all set up. We're fixing to start looking them. I got me a bowl for my good ones, a bowl for the bad ones. And by the time we get through looking all these beans, you'll see why you don't just open your bag and pour them in your jar. You'll see how many bad beans is actually in that bag and why you don't do it that way. So let's start looking these beans. And what you do is just start looking them a handful at a time and just flipping the bad ones off in your bowl. Because after the, all this work, you don't want any bad ones in your in your recipe. Just look them. Get all the bad ones out. You see any with little tiny holes in them or part of it missing? Don't put that one in there. See that one? Half gone.
All right, let me get all these looked and then we'll show you the next step. Okay, y'all, I've got all my beans looked and I just wanted to show y'all these are all the bad ones that I came up with. Plus over here, I got some bad ones. But if you just open that bag up and throw it in your jar, that's what you'd be having. So don't do it. And let me show you this for sure. And this will make you... Right up here, we got the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you don't want those in your can and recipe for sure. So make sure you look your beans. Don't open that bag and pour it in there. Just don't do it, y'all. That's what that's what's in dried beans. Okay, now that we've got all our beans looked, we're going to take them over to the sink and we're going to get them washed and get them soaking for 1 hour. Okay, I want, we're gonna fill our dish pan up. And while it's filling up, I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring, pouring my beans in the dish pan. And we're gonna give them a good wash. And then we'll use the same dish pan to let them soak in. So just take your beans and sort of like rub them together. See all that? See how the water's getting so cloudy looking? That's all the stuff coming off of them that needs to come off. And if you have any more bad ones that you might have missed, you'll start seeing floaters come to the top. See right here how this one right here is floating? That'll let you know that those are the ones you got to get out when the floaters start coming to the top. And what we're going to do now, we're going to we're going to let these beans sit here and soak for about an hour. And then that'll uh, bring any floaters up to the top that you need to pick out. And then we're going to rinse them and then we'll show you the next step. But right now, we're going to let these soak for one hour. Okay, y'all, it's been an hour, and I've let them soak, and now you see the little floaters, and we're going to get those off. But that's that'll bring the little floaters, the other bad ones that you might have missed, to the top. So let's get them off. And see how many we missed? There's three or four in there. And now we're going to get them and we're going to take those out and start rinsing them off. Okay, now that I've done it one time, I'm going to rinse them one more time just to make sure we get them good and clean.
All right, now that we got our beans rinsed, we're ready to start putting them in the jars. Okay, now we're gonna start filling our jars. And after the beans soak and uh, they swell a little bit, we're gonna use a one cup measuring cup and a fourth to still get our one cup of beans. So we're gonna use one cup and then just go behind it and put the one fourth little cup in there. And that'll still equal your one cup of beans dried. Once you wash them and let them soak to make sure you get all the bad ones, they swell up a little bit, so you have to measure it this way. Level it off. Let me get all these filled and we'll bring y'all back. Okay, now that I've got all my beans in my jars, I'm gonna put this thick cut two inch strip bacon piece in each jar to season it. So when I get ready to open my jars to eat, they'll be seasoned and ready to go. All it takes is one piece of bacon per each jar. And before you get ready to use your brine, just give it another good mix. Because that's what we're going to use to fill our jars. And now we're gonna fill each jar with our brine mixture we made. And don't forget to go to the top rim. You wanna leave an inch of head space. Make sure you go to that top little edge and that'll be your one inch head space. Okay, now that we've got our brine in the jars, we're gonna wipe the lids off with a little bit of a vinegar on a wet uh, paper towel and make sure you get your jars good and clean. Make sure there's nothing on the top. And also check your jars to make sure it's not chipped while you're doing this part. So let's just wipe down each jar and check it to make sure it's not chipped or cracked. Okay, now that our lids were boiling, we're gonna bring them over here and we're gonna start putting the lids on each jar. And then we'll just put the rim on and just hold it down while you tighten your rim and just 
Not too tight, just finger tight. Okay, we got all the lids and rims on them now, and let's go get the canners ready. Okay, y'all, we're on our last canner, and I wanted to show y'all how much water we put in our canners. What we do is we use one whole number 10 can, plus refill it another half, so you use one and a half cans of water in your pressure canner to do dried beans. Dried beans are 90 minutes, so you don't ever want to let your pressure canner run out of water. Don't do it. It ain't like doing peaches or squash or anything like that. It takes so much longer to process dried beans. So you have to make sure you have plenty of water in your canner so you don't ever let it give out. So now let's fill this one up and we're gonna take you out there and put it in our last canner. Okay, y'all, there's my water, and I've got my vinegar out here. So now I'm gonna go ahead, and y'all don't forget, always add your splash of vinegar. It keeps your jars pretty and clear. Keeps them pretty and clean, and easy to clean up once you get them all canned. So don't forget your splash of vinegar. Okay, y'all, this is my last jar for this canner. And y'all see how the water comes up to the, uh, the edge of the jar, to the rim? You wanna leave about a half of inch from the lid of the jar, and that will ensure you that you have plenty of water in your canner. So when you're processing beans, your canners don't give out of water. Okay, y'all, I've got my last lid on my pressure canner and we're fixing to start them up. But before we start them up, I wanted to show y'all this little weight that comes with your pressure canner. And this is based on, you use this based on whatever elevation you live at for whatever sea level you're at. If you're 500 or below, you'll use your five pound weight. And if you're like us, we're 800 and something above sea level. So you use the 10 pound weight and then if you're a thousand or above sea level, you'll use your, your third little weight that comes with it. And that'll give you your 15 pounds of weight for your pressure. And, uh, but for us, I'm gonna go ahead now and take off this third, this, this one, and just use the five and the 10, cause we're, we're gonna use 10 pounds of pressure today for where we live at. So let's get it on there and we're fixing to get all our pressure canners started. Okay, y'all, I've got my stove on medium, and that's where I started at. And once my little jigglers start jiggling, I'll turn my pressure canners down on low and let them process for the 90 minutes on low once it starts jiggling. We've got one more thumper to come up. And then we're waiting on them to start jiggling. Waiting on the last one to go to thumping. Okay, y'all, they're all jiggling, so now I'm gonna cut them down on low. And then I'm just gonna let them process for their 90 minutes, and they're gonna slow way down, but they're all under pressure, so we're just gonna let them now sit there and process their 90 minutes. timer went off and now we're going to cut our pressure canners off. Okay y'all the timer just went off so now we're going to cut them off and we're going to let them sit out here until they all come down to pressure and I can open the canners. Okay y'all we got one left to go. The other two have already dropped and we're fixing to open them up and see our beans that we canned. OK, 
Okay, y'all, we've got all our jars in the house and out of the pressure canner. They all turned out so pretty. I want to show y'all what one looks like. That's for all our hard work we've done. Now we have 21 jars for this winter when you get home from work and you want a supper on the table fast. So this is a great way to fill your pantry. And if you like this video and you try canned and dried beans, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe to our channel if you hadn't already. And if you have, thanks for subscribing. And also, always remember the old saying, a family that eats together stays together. Thanks for watching. 21 jars. Up. Oh, did y'all just hear that pop? That's what you want to hear of dried beans to fill our pantry. And when I get home from work now, all I've got to do is open up a can of these pretty beans, make me some cornbread or whatever we're going to have to go with it, some fried pork chops, and we have supper on the table.